I'm the first one to say that my particular golden doodle hasn't been an especially easy dog to have. I've had to deal with Sophie's anxiety and some diva style stubbornness. But today I'm sharing a proud dog owner moment about her perfect dog food manners. Hands down one of Sophie's most wonderful attributes as far as living with her is concerned. Big kudos mostly to Sophie for being a super good girl, but perhaps a little bit of kudos for me for shaping her behavior towards food right from when she was a puppy. Stick around and I'll let you know what I did, what I do and why. Hi, I'm Joanna. I'm here with my Golden Doodle Sophie and this is my Golden Doodle Diary where I talk about all sorts of doggy things, especially about Golden Doodles, Groodles, Doodle Dogs. I'd love for you to subscribe, like and share this video. It makes a big difference to this channel. Now, let's get into it. When it comes to establishing good dog food manners, I like to refer to famous dog behaviourist Cesar Milan's dog psychology or the way I look at it, doggy logic. Dogs are pack animals, which is why we bond so nicely with them. They regard us as being part of the same pack. The most important thing to know is that in their world, dogs naturally create a hierarchy for themselves. There's a leader who makes decisions for the group and the rest know their place as followers. And one of the main ways of maintaining harmony and establishing who's boss and who's a follower is through food. That is, the dominant alpha or leader always eats first and the remainder of the pack needs to stand back and wait their turn to eat at the end. For dogs, this is not an issue because it's a heavier responsibility to lead the pack and much easier and less stressful to be a follower. The way this translates to the human dog world is that if the puppy or dog is new to you and is still working out who's dominant, a way of letting them know that humans are the alphas is for people to always eat first. Cute as she was, we did have a bit of power play with Sophie when she was little. We deliberately turned this around by using pack mentality language to communicate to her that she doesn't need to lead us. So as a rule, we always eat before Sophie does and we never give her our food at the table or when we're eating on the sofa. That way there's an understanding and respect that this is our food time, we are the leaders of the pack and the sequence is that after we eat breakfast or dinner, it's her time to eat. That way there's no food begging while we're eating and we're always consistent about it. No occasional morsels under the table, no pleading dog eyes interrupting our meal. I know this is a matter of preference and some people are fine with dogs asking for food when they see their people eating, but in my view, once that habit is established, it's very hard to break because, well, just try resisting that face. So that's why for Simon and me, sharing our food was a definite no-no. And incidentally, I've never had a set meal time for Sophie. The time she eats is after we eat. So whether we eat early or a late dinner, there's no hassle from the dog due to, say, six o'clock being meal time. What this understanding about feeding times and whose food is whose also means is I can leave food on the counter, table, and even coffee table. Go to another room and be confident my food won't be pilfered. Actually, while we're eating, a lot of the time, Sophie's off half snoozing somewhere nearby. But the minute she sees that we're finishing our dinner, she gets into position with patient anticipation at the edge of the kitchen, knowing that now is her time to eat. I've trained her over time that if she wants to be near me while I'm in the kitchen, this is as far as she can go. The kitchen itself is a no-go zone. The only time I ever get the pleading dog eyes is if I forget to give her food straight after we finish eating. That's only because I've not kept my end of the bargain. So if you politely, calmly and assertively sits in front of us and stares us down until I get up and fix her some food. Before I let you know the way I feed Sophie, there's one more thing I did when she was a puppy to ensure she trusts me around food. I'd feed her her entire meal from my hand, either kibble or a mixture of kibble and mince. 
that's so she would develop a positive association with me being around while she's eating. I'd close my hand like a Kong dispenser so she wouldn't woof it down too quickly. And I'd pat her with the other hand. So coming back to how I feed Sophie once Simon and I have finished our meal. Ever since she was little, I'd make sure she gets her food as a reward for waiting patiently and calmly. I'd walk over from the kitchen. To the front door and get her to stay at the door. When she's calm, and nowadays she's always calm, I ask her to come, then put the food down and say wait. Then she needs to look me directly in the eye and wait for me to say the release word, which is okay. Once I say okay, that food is always hers. I never mess with her by taking it away. That's just aggravating. It's a matter of trust and respect. I can stay right by the food or give her a little pat and she doesn't have an issue with me being there. In the world of dog psychology, I've just referred to the way things work in a pack. By eating first, I'm established as the pack leader. By showing good behaviour and patiently waiting for her food, Sophie is the follower and has earned her food. Now, all the practices we have around feeding Sophie are a matter of routine and habit. We're never bothered by her while we're eating. Sophie always gets her food and we don't need to worry about food getting stolen either. If you have any other tips for encouraging good food manners for dogs, let me know in the comments down below. And if you'd like to know more about some clever training tips that have helped me, take a look at the video on screen now. Don't forget to subscribe and like, and I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.